What's up everybody, this is Chieftain, and you're looking at the screen thinking, what the heck is going on? Or if you saw the title, you know, it's tutorial day here at the Lag It Out Podcast. We were getting a lot of questions about how we did the heads-up display for the Iron Man suit last week, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. I'm an editing program called Adobe Premiere. I'm using CS6 since my editing system is not up yet, I'm using an older version. So if you're using a newer version of Adobe Premiere, this tutorial will be remarkably similar and there'll be some, if any, there'll be very slight changes to it. What we're going to do today is a quick color correct scale and implementation of the heads up display. So let's get started. As you see here, we have some footage of me behind a black screen here. This is the footage. So let's turn off the audio so that way you don't have to hear it over and over again. And we have the graphics. But right now we're gonna deal with this footage that I imported from my Coolpix Nikon camera. You can see a lot of the backgrounds very not solid. There's some clipping here of my back wall. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to fix all this stuff to make it look like the final heads up display. First thing we have to do is implement a color corrector so that way it's more uniform and the color looks okay. Go to effects, type in fast color corrector. There it is right there. We double click on it and it pops up in our effects controls in our footage. And what we wanna do right now is we wanna darken, we wanna desaturate my face a little bit because there's a lot of orange in there. And we also wanna darken the background. So this works like in Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. I like to use the input levels here. The next thing we want to do here is desaturate it a little bit. I want to desaturate it to a point where it's not distracted because we're going to implement color later. Make this background a little bit more solid black. So let's try to adjust the mid-levels here to something like that. So something like that a little bit bigger that's what she said the next thing we want to do is scale and resize it so what I did here is you go under your scale and rotation you see there's keyframes there we'll talk about that later and since this is kind of small what we want to do here is kind of center center the face a little bit so what I did here is I scaled it up to 228 and changed position over a little bit. So I'm a little bit more center and screen. Now it doesn't look like I'm center and screen now because I'm moving around a lot. And you can see the background's completely black, kind of like in the Iron Man helmet. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna use the color corrector I did before. I'm gonna get rid of this really quick. You can see the original is a little bit darker, a little bit saturated. So that way, when I'm ready to add my effects, I have a nice little template there to center everything. I have the heads up display. Okay, there they are. And these are a combination of different effects that I found royalty free. Right now, it doesn't look like it all matches. So I look way too bright in the scene. Uh, I wanna make these heads up displays look like they're interacting with my face. So I wanna add some lighting effects in here. I will add an effects called effects lighting effects. So we're gonna do a 2D lighting effect. By double clicking on this, it'll implement it into your footage that you have selected. And go to effects controls, I went to the wrong one. You will see if you have all these options here. It automatically opens it up for you. So you have lighting effects and you have five options for lights. So you can do any, there's different lights in here that you can use. So there's a directional, goes to the direction that you need. And by selecting on lighting effects, select on this object and you can see the direction of the light. There you go, I had to make it really small. So you can see it's really far away. When we scale it in, you can see it gets brighter. This little anchor point here is where you can change the direction of the light. Set up to anywhere we want it to go. It's just like a little general light where you could set up areas and mess with the radius and everything like that. Make it brighter, smaller. It's an isolation light. You can also, with the intensity, increase the intensity, decrease the intensity, obviously. 
And by hitting the tab here, there's a spotlight. Make this a little bit bigger. You can change a bunch of things with the focus and intensity. There we go, there's the radius. I don't know why it's so small. That's what she said. And you can control the scales however you want. And there is a major radius, which is the outside, which is kind of a drop off point. And the minor radius is the inside. So you can make it really bright with a very small drop off if your major radius is not that much larger than your minor. And you can actually change the angle too. You can rotate the angles, intensity, and you can also change the color here. Is we want to have an eye slit effect for the for the top part, maybe a blue light coming from here, a red light coming from here, and maybe an orange or red light coming from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably have three or four lights here for this effect. So right here is my lighting setup. You can see all the lights by selecting on them. For my first light, I use in the bottom right hand corner, and it is a pink light. I made a little off white pink light, a little something subtle. So I have it pushing towards here because it's an older version. And that was the first light I implemented. The second light is a spotlight. Let me fit that in there really quick. There we go. I think that is. If I can get it to work, I'll select it. Light three was a spotlight, and that was, I think, on the left-hand side. And the final light I used was another blue light on the left-hand side on the top. So you can see there's a little bit of a, everything's gone. It looks like there's some sort of effect going on with the lights. It looks like it belongs. You can see how it flows with the face. Now tracking, you notice the heads up display graphics are tracking the face. That is something that you can do in After Effects a lot easier that you can do in Premiere. In Premiere, you just have to spot key it. And if you're looking to track something in Premiere, I have a video in the link below that can show you how to do it really easily. When I go over here, it's gonna be slightly different on the newer versions of Premiere. For doing the heads up display, for this what we want to do is this is already clicked we need to click off on that we want to go to the first frame let's get rid of this want to go to the first frame turn everything off and reset it we want to click on this object here for the target and we want to be able, we want to have a little target point. So I'm picking the top of my bulbous nose here for the first frame. And I'm going to, that's going to be my starting frame. I'm just going to stop it right now and I'm, I'll track this all the way through. Restart it and have it all tracked for you guys and just show you the final result. Okay, so I set all the keyframes over to match my head movement. Again, if you have After Effects, the tracking software is a lot better than it is in Premiere. Or Premiere Elements actually has tracking software. I don't know why they did that. We don't have that luxury, so we had to hand key it. And this is our final result. And that's how I did the heads up display, tracking and color correction. If you like this tutorial and you'd like us to do more, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to bang that bell in the top right hand corner and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe at the links below. On behalf of Lagging Out Entertainment, this is Chieftain signing off and lagging out.